Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of the Two Footed Tackle Podcast. I'm your host, Iris and Tarkos. We're back again with a lot of football talk to speak about, which will be great as always. I hope you all have had a great week. I hope you've all had a fantastic Easter week as well. So happy Easter for those who for those who celebrate. Um, I hope you guys had some awesome chocolate because fuck Easter chocolate's just. I think I saw this study actually, like the why Easter chocolate was better. I didn't read it, but I think I saw that there's an actual reason why Easter chocolate tastes better. So if you guys love Easter chocolate but don't love normal chocolate, there's probably a reason behind that because for whatever reason they just taste better. Um, but yeah, I hope everyone has enjoyed the, the Easter break. I hope everyone enjoyed the football over the weekend. A couple of big games to speak about which we'll be covering a lot in depth um which i think has a lot of ramp title for race ramifications as always but apart from that i hope everyone is well as always um before we kick things off i implore you all to subscribe to the two foot tackle podcast on tiktok instagram uh, or subscribe to it on youtube and then follow it on, on tiktok instagram and twitter all the socials well the social links are in the description of the youtube um of the youtube video video um and then of course all the audio platforms as spotify apple podcast google podcast anchor the whole nine yards once again does mean more than the world i yeah let's let, let's crack on what do we what do we have to speak about today not not a whole lot on the run sheet in all honesty um not a whole lot on the run sheet in all, in all honesty but we have enough where we could definitely speak about a fair bit and mainly it's got to do with the City versus Arsenal and subsequent, or the Liverpool versus Brighton game, but the subsequent City versus Arsenal game. I want to go over to Germany and speak about I think, a couple of things that happened over there. Come back to Australia and speak about some A League wrap up. Let's speak about some A League things as well. Now, before we kick things off, fit check as always. I'm rocking a. I don't know exactly what year. If I had to guess. It would probably be around about the mid to mid two thousands, early twenty tens. It's a Barcelona training hoodie with the Qatar Foundation sponsor. This this jumper is it, it, this is a jumper. So it's actually not. It's actually the first time I've worn a non kit. Um, this jumper is not the most aesthetically pleasing jumper. Like it's got it's got the thumb thing, so it's got like the thumb kind of sleeve in there. Um it's it's a very nice very, it's a very nice it's a very nice jumper. I can't complain. I def- I definitely can't complain. With a navy blue kind of with the navy blue navy blue base, the bright yellow slash gold colouring with a tick, the Qatar Foundations, the badge the the, the, the crest fits there perfectly. The kind of crew neck kind of tight around the neck collar which is really good. But I think what I love most about this hoodie, or this jumper, I should say, is the fact that this kind of is a piece of memorabilia, in a sense, from the best football team I think ever, has ever existed. Like, the, the the period from about, like, mid mid the mid-2000s, late, late 2000s to the early 2010s, it was the best Barcelona team. Uh, like was the one of the best football teams ever, probably the best Barcelona team ever. Well, definitely the best Barcelona team ever. One of the best football teams ever. When I think of this kind of hoodie uh, or like this kind of jumper, I think of Xavi, Iniesta, Busquets, David Villa, Messi, Pedro, Victor Valdez, Puyol, Dani Alves. Like it's just superstar after superstar after superstar after superstar. Elite football after elite, elite football are playing the best football, winning Champions Leagues at Wembley, winning Champions Leagues in where else did they win it? They won it against um against United in was that in Porto? I feel like it was uh, uh, for some reason I want to say Porto, um, but regardless they were winning like Champions Leagues, winning leagues, just constantly, constantly doing what, like constantly being. It was in Rome. It was in Rome. Um, it was at Stadio Olimpico in Rome, the tournament win over United, but just like constantly leveling up and being the the best and most aesthetically fo- pleasing football team to watch. And it is also a, t- a period of time in which I, I have a lot of nostalgia about football, that kind of like early 2010s, um, 2012, 2013, 2011. That's really my football nostalgia, um, playing like even FIFA from that time, even just the, the tournaments at that time, that's the 2010 World Cup. Even a little bit later with the 2014 World Cup, like just a lot of, a lot of very good, kind of, f- f- football errors in that time, very kind of memorable footballers and iconic footballers at that time, and I think this jumper kind of commemorates that 
as always. Um, once again, it, it is the the yellow is showing up a little bit greener, but it's it's very much a gold, a gold yellow. Um, but once again, I'm I'm digressing as always. Fuck, I I I don't digress enough on this podcast. I should really do it more often. Um, but let's kick things off. Let's actually start to speak about. Um, let's go straight into. What should we go? Let, let, let's go. Let's go to the prem and let's speak about Arsenal. Well, let's speak about Liverpool. Liverpool. Um, Liverpool versus Brighton, um, and then we'll speak about the Arsenal game because this has a lot of ramifications on the title race. This was one of the one of the biggest mornings in title race history, um, especially for for this kind of um, in if, especially for this season. But in the last couple of seasons, you would you will very rarely see a more consequential kind of five or six hours of football um, because that. Liverpool hosted Brighton, <coughs> and then Man City hosted Arsenal, and both games had had and have massive ramifications for the title race. Liverpool went in, Liverpool went in one point clear of um of Arsenal. Was it yeah one point clear? Yeah, no two no they went equal on points. Yeah, they went equal on points with Arsenal. Just trying to do the math, math in my head based on the current. They were they're now two points clear, so they would have had to make up the two point gap, which they did. Um, and then they were obviously three points clear, or they were four, four points clear of City, I think. And now they're three points clear, or five points clear. I don't know. Regardless, as things stand right now, Liverpool are two points clear of Arsenal, three points clear of City, and it, and it's very tight. And with some of the fixtures that both teams have um, coming up, it will be very interesting to see whether or not um, it will be very interesting to see whether or not either team can can kind of maintain that um, and can kind of like really settle settle their nerve in a sense and kind of like if Liverpool can can hold their nerve and um, and allow themselves to maintain this lead which I think is going to be very interesting because a lot of people probably always have had City as kind of the the best team in a sense like in terms of pound for pound team a lot of people have always had City as the best in this title race um whereas Liverpool probably have always been that have always been that team that I think a lot of people always have a little bit like one step off, whereas Arsenal are that plucky underdog. So it'll be interesting to see whether or not Liverpool, with this lead that they've got right now, with what, how many games to go, with nine games to go, whether or not they can hold on to it. Um, yeah, I guess I guess it will just have to be a wait and see for that one. But yeah, Liverpool versus Brighton, we'll touch on that game first. Danny Welbeck, two minutes in with a goal to give them the lead. Very, very kind of... Uh, upsetting the apple cart, not going, not going to how the script kind of was meant to go, which is very typical in in, in games like this that that are, that decide title races in a sense. Um, they don't they don't go how they're normally meant to go in a way. Um, but then Diaz, not long after, before half an hour mark scores, and then Salah with a beautiful kind of assist with from Sabozlo. Oh, I was from McAllister. Beautiful kind of play through. Salah scores, two one goal disallowed as well later on. If I'm not mistaken, it was. Diaz maybe with the goal that was disallowed. Um, I can't quite remember. But regardless, they um they they did enough to hold on when they needed to. It was um yeah, on the seventy third minute Diaz's goal ruled out for offside, um, or ruled out for whatever reason. But they did enough they did what they had to do to, to hold on. Liverpool right now probably I was like normally Liverpool are the hipsters choice when it comes to teams in the title race because City were that just like ruthless robotic I will just win and win and win because Pep is ruthless and the way that and their spending's ruthless and whatever. And Liverpool have always been that kind of hipsters choice. Like when they won the league in, in like the first COVID season. It was very much a hipsters kind of Premier League win. And then subsequently like a lot of the a lot of the results from this year have kind of lend the, lend themselves towards that. Liverpool probably haven't been the best team all year. They've probably been the third best team all year out of Arsenal and City and, and themselves. But they currently find themselves uh, two points clear. I I don't know. I don't see them right now not being able to go ahead with this. Right, to, like not being able to kind of go ahead with this and take it forward. Uh, I I would actually go as far as saying they're 
exit from the FA Cup probably helps them a little bit, especially towards the back end of the season, because they won't have that to worry about. They've got a couple of tough games, like they've got a run where they've got Everton, West Ham, Tottenham, and then Villa, which is obviously very tough. They've got United away, which I think if they can get past United away, and if they can get past United away, which will be, which will be tough, because United will want to do everything in their power to make sure that Liverpool don't win the league. If they can get past that, I don't I, I, I don't see them change. I don't see I don't see it slipping away for them right now. I think the draw I think the draw this in, in the in the subsequent game is I think shows the I, I, I think the draw in the subsequent game shows right now that Liverpool are in the box seat and that if kind of if Right now, if Liverpool just play their best, they they, they win the league. And I think, I, I think we've also seen throughout the season that Liverpool are a team that are susceptible to upsets, but I think are also are also a team that can and have shown their abilities to just be ruthless in their in their pursuit for success. So I think what we saw in this in this game against Brighton, like they went behind, but like straight away that they, they got the goal back. And while they didn't, they, like they dominated the game. Brighton, of course, are a team that. Are very capable, and are very ca- very capable of beating good teams, and are very capable of carving teams open and really putting good teams on the back foot. They've had a slightly underwhelming season this season, but traditionally they have been, especially over the last couple of years. And that they were able to pick them apart with ease, and they were able to really dominate them, and and not be flustered by the potential upset of Brighton, but also not be able not be flustered by the the one nil deficit which they had early on at home. Upsetting the uppercut, etc., etc. So, I think. Look, I, I look. I genuinely think. I genuinely think it's Liverpool to lose. Like I, I don't see a world in which, as things stand right now, Liverpool drop enough points to not win the league. I, I can't see that happening. I really can't see that happening. And while it could happen, like they've got United in two games' time, United could very easily win that game at Old Trafford, and all of a sudden the title race is flipped on its head. But I think Liverpool with the Klopp motivation in particular, are just so unbelievably kind of ruthless and driven on this title that I can't I just can't see them dropping points in in enough points in in a way to, to lose the league. Like I can definitely see them drawing a couple of games like they got Villa which would be tough. Everton is always gonna to be tough. United's always gonna to be tough just because of the circumstance of those two games. I can see them dropping points, but I can't see them dropping enough points not win the league. Because I also think we saw that City and Arsenal are both very fallible. And I think that drawing that game didn't really do either team a good service, in my opinion. So I guess we just have to wait and say. I guess we just have to wait and say. Because I struggle I really do struggle to think of. I struggle to think of a scenario in my head that Liverpool let this choke, and subsequently, because of the fact that City and Arsenal drew in the way that they did, with neither team really showing ruthless intentions going forward, um, City hosted Arsenal, nil nil draw. Nothing really going, f- nothing really going either way. Like not nothing really going the way of either team. It was a very, I wouldn't say lackluster. It it was lackluster. No, it was lackluster. It was boring. It was a boring game of football. It was, and a lot of people could sit back and go, oh, but fucking tactically, Pep Guardiola did this and fucking X Y Z. I don't care. Um, I I do care because I do care about the tactical side of the game. But I think in games like this, in, in a in a game that has so much immediate ramifications. It's almost it's almost like a quarter final or a semi final of a cup competition. This type of game, you just want to see results. You just want to see goals because that's what's going to win games and that's what's going to get you got get teams higher up the table. I I I thought both teams came into the game with the approach of not losing, and I think City City have had that mentality for a lot of big games especially over the last couple of years and I guess that's probably why they've done so well in and like the success that, and have had the success that they've had is because they've just been ruthless in a sense of not maybe not ruthless but have been so conservative maybe in a way of in big games and in games that have immediate ramifications for the title when it comes to if this team wins they jump us 
rather than games against like a uh, uh, Bournemouth where or or games against like a, a Brighton where if City lose to Brighton then Liverpool would have to win their game to jump them. That's not immediate ramifications. The immediate immediate ramifications of if City lose to Liverpool, Liverpool jump up Liverpool City or Arsenal or whoever. They have shown this ability to just not lose those games. And I think that is very while not exciting and pleasing on the eye, it's commendable. Because man, like you would rather not you would rather not lose that game than not win it. Yeah, you'd rather not lose that game than not win it. And I I, I think it's the it's the mentality of a, of a successful team. It's the mentality of a successful team. So you can't criticize them for it. And I think Arsenal probably had a little bit more I wouldn't say license to be a little bit more defensive, but they were playing away from home. They it's it's not their full, full team um playing in my opinion. They've got a couple of players who who aren't there and who like and who came off the bench and who probably would have started if they were fully fit or whatever. I I think Arsenal probably had a little bit more of an excuse to be a little bit more defensive and to kind of be a little bit more conservative, but they didn't. In fairness in fairness to them they weren't overly conservative and they didn't completely park the bus. They were safe in their approach and City were also safe in their approach as well. So this is what that's what happens when you get kind of a a dog fight in which neither dog wants to kill each other. It's kind of just like ma- making sure that neither team makes a mistake in order that in order for them to lose the game. Um, yeah, it was a weird game. A weird game of football. Had so much hype around it, so much excitement. It's probably the last it's the last title race decider in a sense because Arsenal and City um, Arsenal City and Liverpool do not play each other again. Like so this was the last time we would see immediate fallout from a game, which is a little bit disappointing because you want to see games like this have like immediate fireworks and etc. But it didn't. It's just one of those things. Arsenal probably have the toughest kind of fixture run home. I just saw um, they've got they've got Brighton, they've got Villa, they've got Chelsea, Tottenham, United, Everton. Everton's always tough, um, considering their kind of like any team any time in the relegation battle will be tough towards the back end of the season. So, yeah, Arsenal. Arsenal. I was more. I was more content with Arsenal's performance than I was Man City's. I think City could have been more. Could have had a little bit more in the chamber. Could have really gone for a little bit more. I think Harlan was absent. I think Foden was poor. Bernardo Silva was poor. Um, De Bruyne was fine without being extraordinary. I don't. I don't think Rodri was fine. Kovacic was a bit poor. Got subbed off. Um, I thought the defense held up, and I, I thought Arsenal's defense held up as well. I thought um, Gabriel was was really good alongside Saliba. Um, yeah, but it, yeah, it's just disappointing that 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 games like this don't have that that ruthless edge. And I think, and I think, I mean, like I said, I think you can blame City a little bit more, or you, you can you can blame City more for that than Arsenal because Arsenal have more of an excuse to be a little bit more defensive when they come up against Man City away from home, regardless of the circumstances, but including the circumstances of the title being decided, basically. Or, or, or like if Arsenal lose this game, they probably can't win the title. Or if City lose this game, they probably can't win the title. Um, I, 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 so you don't you can't blame them for that from that kind of perspective. But look, I mean, look, looking forward now. I think I said it. Uh, Liverpool, it's Liverpool's to lose, and this and th- this game is it, it's a real catch twenty two for, for for um for Arsenal and and City because it's a real catch twenty two for Arsenal and City because if they lose this game, they almost can't win the title. But in order to in order to kind of in, but, but in the same vein, if they win this game, that it probably gives them the best chance of winning the title. So in order to try and win that game, you have to risk losing the game. Whereas the draw is kind of the complete middle section of it, where they can still win the league, but they still can lose it. And it's just kind of... It's almost kicking the can down the road, in a sense. You're delaying the inevitable, the inevitable seesaw one game further down the track instead of having it decided now, if that makes sense. Um, which is a, is a conservative way of approaching it, which I get and I commend. And if I was Arsenal, I'd, wanted, I'd want that approach. If I was City, I probably wouldn't because we're away from home and I... Oh, we're, we're at home, sorry. And I, and I think that if I was a City supporter, I think that we would be able to dominate and eventually find a way through. 
whereas Arsenal probably more content to sit back, like I said, like I've said countless times. So um, Liverpool would be pleased with that result. They um that they, they extend their gap, which is great for them. If I was right now coming out of this weekend, you'd be the happiest if you're a Liverpool supporter. You'd probably be the most upset if you're a City supporter. Um, right now, probably because of the league table as well, but because City probably have the, it's probably a chance that in a couple of weeks' time I'm going to look back and think, fuck, if only City had gone for a little bit more and had scraped that 1-0 win in the 90th minute, all of a sudden things could be things could turn on their head because if City go on and win that game, they're only one point behind Liverpool and all of a sudden Arsenal are, Arsenal are back down and, uh, and are kind of scratching and clawing to maintain their, maintain their position in the title race, whereas City will establish themselves there, whereas it's kind of roles are reversed in a little bit, of, in, in a sense. Um, yeah, interesting title race, and it's five, It's going to be a proper three-horse race all the way to the end. I don't see any team fully slipping off, and I, I don't see any team fully slipping off. I think all of them are going to be there or thereabouts, definitely towards the last, last game week, last two game weeks. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting. We've got nine games left, two months of football. Like I said, right now, right now, Liverpool winner for me, Arsenal finish second, and United and City finish third. Right now, in my opinion, so I guess we we'll have to to wait and see on that because it's going to be tight. It's going to be really, really tight. But yeah, um, that is all for for title race chat. I think. Okay, moving on. Um, I want to go to Germany. Bayern Munich lost on the weekend, two 0 to the Borussia Dortmund. They're now 13 points behind Bayer Leverkusen with, I think, seven or so games to go, six or so, seven or eight games to go. Um, Also, quickly, by the way, if you can hear drilling and banging, there's works happening just behind this wall next door. So it's it's Easter Monday and you're doing the housework, whatever. Um, It is what it is. But um, yeah, they're like, it's like they're 13 points clear with, I think, seven or so games to go. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven games to go. Title race all but over. Um, all but over. Thomas Hitchell, Bayern Munich um, manager, has basically come in and said it's all but over. Now, I don't want to speak about... Like, obviously, Bayern Munich is a story there, and I'm sure I'll touch on that soon, but I want to speak on Harry Kane. I want to speak on Harry Kane because fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. And this was the one storyline coming out of this or coming into this season after that transfer happened where everyone was like, if this happens, something is seriously wrong. And it's and it's Harry Kane going to the unlosable league, playing for the team that wins that league every single time and not winning the league. It's a, it's a, this issue. Now, I, I want to speak about it from a more legacy perspective because I think Harry Kane is undoubtedly an unbelievable footballer, one of, if not the best strikers the Premier League has ever seen. He's he playmaking ability off the charts, goal scoring ability is he's ruthless. Not the quickest, but doesn't need to be. His strength, his his football IQ is unbelievable. And like brilliant number nine. Like I can I can't speak highly enough about him as a Chelsea supporter. He's killed us so many times. Uh, that goal he scored when it was five two on New Year's Day um, at at the old White Hart Lane was horrendous. I had that game still gives me nightmares. Um, five two or four two or five three whatever it was. Um, that goal from like thirty yards out bottom corner, it, 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 freakish stuff, right? And I I can't speak highly I can't speak highly enough about him as a footballer. But at what stage does legacy and trophies won? Start to become a conversation because because realistically he he could have won a ballon. I don't want to use. I, don't, I feel like I'm gonna be. I feel like I'm gonna be using a lot of past tense in my in the way that I describe Harry Kane right now because it feels like this was his chance when it's quite clearly not. Like he'll probably win the league next year. Like if we're being honest, he'll probably win the league next year, and this whole conversation will probably be null and void, and he'll finally win it and Bayern win the league by thirty points because they bought. Six hundred million pounds worth of fo- good footballs and and just win the league again. That's besides the point. Harry Kane could have won the Ballon d'Or this year, right? Very easily won the Ballon d'Or if he if he won the cha- if he won the league with Bayern Munich, won the Euros with England, went far in the in the Champions League, and he top goal scorer in a couple of tournaments. He could have easily won the Ballon d'Or, right? Because I don't think like we're not in that we're not in the era anymore where it's Messi and Ronaldo just winning it because they're Messi and Ronaldo. It's actual competition now. So hey, Harry Kane could have won the Ballon d'Or if Harry Kane won the Ballon d'Or. 
first English player to win it since Michael Owen. Won the won the league with Bayern Munich and won the Euros with England, leading them to the first match, first major trophy since nineteen sixty six. That kind of establishes him, and that kind of puts and casts away all the conversations about he's a great footballer, but what has he won? In one swoop, in one year, wins wins uh, two trophies, goes far in the Champions League, and wins a Ballon d'Or. All that talk of he's a serial bottler, never won anything. What's he done? What's his trophy cabinet? All of that goes away, and all of a sudden he is one of the best footballers. I don't want to say ever because I think that's an extreme reach. One of the best English football, one of the better English footballers of all time, and one of the best strikers that the Premier League has seen, and that, like in my generation, he's probably up there in the top five strikers in my generation, right? But all of a sudden, England, I mean, they had they had a couple of, they had a couple of friendlies the other day or like the last week, they like. Will they win the Euros? I don't know. I still think that they could, but you just don't know. He's not going to win the league. Can they win the Champions League? They've got Arsenal in the next round, which I think they win, but then they've got a best Real Madrid or City in the semis. And then, I mean, once you get to the final, it's it's anyone's game. But Real Madrid and City both play pretty good football. Um, and Bayern I haven't been at their best. So all of a sudden, what has gone from the potential most kind of euphoric summation and the most kind of or like the 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 perfect um strike through or the perfect silencer that's the word the perfect silencer of an argument that has been put against him for for a long long time close on maybe five or six years now it could have been the perfect silencer but it, it, it it's almost like in the blink of an eye it's gone because Especially, I mean, who knows what? Who knows what? Who knows what's going to happen in the first leg of the Arsenal uh, Bayern Munich game? But if Arsenal turn around and take a three 0 lead going into the second into the second leg, Bayern Leverkusen extend their lead at the at the at the top of the top of the league to 15, 16 points, and the league is officially done. All of a sudden, you're like, can England win the Euros? And even if they do win the Euros, does that matter? And then all and then the doubts are creeping into, into the minds of England just don't win. England don't win, and they've got Harry Kane up front who we've seen right now can't win because he went to Bayern Munich, the team that always wins, and they didn't win. And Tottenham had Tottenham were the best team Tottenham were the best team in England over two calendar years and didn't win the Premier League. How does that happen? How does that happen? They were by far the best Premier League team over two calendar years, twenty fifteen and twenty sixteen. They were the best football team in the country and they didn't win the league. How does that happen? Right? I I I don't I it, like it's really weird. It's really weird because he's c- can a footballer with so much talent and so much ability be so cursed? Like I I I don't know. I don't know. And this season will hurt will hurt his legacy a lot. Like th- this season. I don't want to say this season will tarnish his legacy because he's still got years to go. He could very, very easily still win a couple of trophies, right? But this was the year where it was all meant to piece together. He was meant to go to Germany, win the league comfortably. He was meant to lead Bayern Munich back to the upper echelons of the Champions League. He was meant to lead England to a European Championship victory. And he was meant to be the perfect silencer to the one argument and the one kind of chink in his armor that has been potted at him throughout his whole career is that the fact that he doesn't win things this was meant to be the year in which he won everything and all of a sudden arsenal look favorites to go through in the champions league Bayern Munich can't win the league and are England going to win the euros i think they will but will they probably not so all of a sudden it's like oh my god is he not the person and the player maybe not person is he not the player that we thought he was is he is there something going on? And is he have we overrated him or whatever? I I don't know. I don't know. It's it's fascinating. It's fascinating. It truly is. Because he's extremely talented, absurdly talented. And obscene absurdly talented footballers always get their dues. Always get their their kind of how would I describe it? They always get their reward. 
And he probably still will end up getting it. But this was the year it was meant to happen and it didn't happen. So, like, you just don't know these days anymore. You just don't know. Um, because next year, all of a sudden, by Javi Lonza could stay at Bayer Leverkusen. They get a couple of good players. They keep a lot. They keep the core nucleus of that squad. They get a couple of players to to top up, and all of a sudden, they become a powerhouse, and the league is not a walk in the park anymore. Or, and then England don't win the Euros, and then all of a sudden, he's got to wait two more years to to get a shot at at the World Cup, and doesn't win the league again, and buy and crash out of the Champions League, and. It's happening again, and like the the and all of a sudden he's thirty three next year, and he's slowing down. He's not striking the ball like he once was. He wasn't moving like he once was. He's half a step behind the game, and all of a sudden it's slowly losing it now. If there's a finite amount of time in which you can win things, a finite amount of time which in which you can win things, and in in and in reality, Harry Kane should have left should have left Tottenham two years before he did, and he left Tottenham this year, and he's what I want to say he's what twenty uh, thirty one. He's he's thirty, turning thirty one in the off season. He's got, I mean, he's lucky. He's a player that doesn't rely on on pace. So you think he'd probably be at a very acceptable level for another three or four years, but still, like, it's not easy to win things and to prove doubt is wrong when you're thirty three, thirty four. I, it's interesting. Yeah, I it's it's just a shame because he's so good. Like, like we don't speak this way about average footballers. We speak this way about the elite footballers because they are the elite footballers for a reason. I don't know. I don't know. I guess I guess we just have to kind of sit back and, 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 and watch and ponder his response because, look, if he wins the Euros, I think a lot of this is forgotten. And then again, if he wins the league next year, all of this is forgotten as well. So I guess we'll just have to kind of wait and see when it comes to that, um, when, it, when it comes to that whole... That that whole thing, um, but yeah, is that? I think that's all for 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 Harry Kane. Let's go. Let's take a flight. Let's come back to um. Let's come back to Australia, and I want to quickly speak on the broadcast thing that happened in the A League. Um, so for those who don't know, for those who don't know, it ha- it happened on Thursday afternoon, I think, or fr- Friday afternoon, one of the two. Um, the A League. The A League brought the A League product. So the production company that the A League has signed the contract with with to produce the games, not Paramount. Paramount is the broadcasting partner. So there's broadcast, which is the 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 medium through which people watch it, and there is produ- uh, uh, production companies, which is the medium in which it is actually able to be watched. If that makes sense, so the production company that the A League signed a contract with to produce all the games, and film all the games and etc. went under. They folded, just like that. And all of a sudden, the the league started in two. The the, the uh, there was an A League women's game happening in twenty six hours, and there we were, we were on the verge of an A League blackout for the Easter weekend. It was calamitous. Calamitous, and it's another, it's another stain on Danny Townsend's history and then his reputation. I just want to say because he signed this contract. I, I, there, there is so much. I'm gonna sit here repeating myself. There is so much wrong with the league right now that there needs to be stability in places where where it's easy to find stability. Fox had absolutely no issues with their production for. The, the 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 seventeen years that they had it, there was issues with the broadcast, yes, not issues with the production. All the games were very very watchable, all the games were watchable, all the games had were were produced to a high quality standard. That has nothing to do with Fox, Fox of the broadcast. There was issues with the broadcast. There was not issues with the production of the broadcast. All of a sudden, Paramount, there's issues with the produ- with the production. There's issues with the production, and 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 fucking, not only is is the issue with the production, the broadcast has been a shambles for two years, right? It is such an easy way to to have stability. It's such an easy way to be, to to have to kind of give back to your fans by just having a solid product that is reliable, and for whatever reason, the APL, the former administration, they said fuck this. We're going to go with someone that's completely untested and unproven. 
Why? Because they were so much cheaper than the other than the other people that Fox used. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. If you guys don't have money, oh, what's this? You guys spent thirty million dollars on a fucking website. How does that work? How does that work? You know that thirty million dollars, thirty million bucks. It's a lot of money. You can buy, you can buy, you can buy like three fifths of a Fernando Torres for thirty million bucks. And instead of putting it to an app and a website that no one used and no one was ever going to use because FopMob exists, how about put it to actually having solid, reliable production for your main kind of thing that you do, which is football games? Just a, just a thought. I don't know. I'm just spitballing ideas here. But, I mean, what do I know, right? What do I, what do I know? Um... It's just it's just ridiculous. But look, at the end of the day, what what, what more we can sit here and, and go in circles about it? What more can we say? Um, speaking on actual A League games that happened, um, I I find it pretty funny that Melbourne City, um, I find it pretty funny that Melbourne City can win a game. What did they 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 won a game seven nil. Yeah, I find it pretty funny that Melbourne City can win a game seven nil, lose a game five one, win a game eight one, all in the same year. And not make the finals, and and lose a game six nil, um, all in the same year and not make the finals. I find that pretty funny. Um, they currently sit two points out of the of the top six. They do have a game in hand in fairness with a couple of games to go, but I still find that quite ironic. Um, victory one against Perth, two one win. Um, Zinedine Machachi is a baller. Daniel Azani. If, Dan- if Daniel Azani had a left foot, he'd be the best football player in the world. I'm convinced of this fact. I am convinced of this fact. If Daniel Azani was born ambidextrous in his legs, he would be the best footballer in the world. And like it, some of the things he can do, he's just fucked. But that's besides the point. Um, <laughs> that, that's besides the point. Well, until got their one 0 win over Brisbane Raw. I think this was like the third earliest goal ever scored in Australian Eastern Daylight Time for the A League because the game started at like twelve. The game started twelve. Did the game start at like twelve thirty? New Zealand time or like a one o'clock New Zealand time, which was eleven a.m. Australian Eastern Daylight Time, which and uh, uh, Cray have scored um, uh, in the second minute, so it was like eleven o two Australian Eastern Daylight Time, which is like one of the earliest goals ever scored in A League men's football, which is quite funny. Um, Adelaide got a four one win over Western United. Irakunda hat trick, freak, just absolute baller, like. What more do we have to say? Like he, how he is not started and played for the Socceroos is beyond me. Graham Arnold, get your fucking shit together. Seriously, it's a joke. It's a disgrace. It's an actual disgrace. Um, but I mean, <sighs> just shrug, <laughs> just shrug. Adelaide making a late charge for the for the finals, maybe seven points away with a couple of games to go. Yeah, probably not. Probably not going to happen, um, but you never know. Stranger things, stranger things have happened. But yeah, it's it's going to be a very interesting final series for sure because West Wellington Phoenix, Central Coast, and Victory are probably the three best sides in it. Macarthur and Western Sydney are actually playing as we speak right now. Um, it's currently nil nil in the twentieth minute. Um, so maybe like Macarthur probably have the, Macarthur can jump Victory. No, no, they can't. Or they can if they score if they win by eight goals. So or nine goals. Even. Um, yeah, so it's probably well into Phoenix, Central Coast, and Victory, probably the three best teams in it. Um, MacArthur, Sydney, and Western Sydney, probably the, the, the next kind of bracket down. So it'll be interesting to see whether or not City can sneak their way in. Brisbane, probably not. Adelaide, probably not. And then Newcastle, Wellington. Just um, just languaging towards the bottom end of the table. But it is what it is. Okay, I think that's enough. It's 3.20. The AFL has started. So I'm going to go downstairs and watch that um, while editing all this and then doing all the things I need to do for this. But yes, thank you all very much for watching another episode of the Two Footed Tackle podcast. I appreciate you all sticking around if you have. If this is your first episode, thank you. Make sure you subscribe. Um, if this is your 100th, make thank you for sticking around once again. Um, but yeah, see you guys next week. Actually, I, I'm going to I'm gonna put a PSA out right now. Next week's episode might be either delayed or not here because I will be going to Adelaide for the weekend. Um, and I will not be returning until Monday during the day, and I will be very and I'm driving. It's an hour. It's an eight hour drive, so there might be a delayed episode. It might be a Wednesday upload, maybe. I don't know. I'll make sure to update whilst on the socials, of course. So yes, thank you all very much for watching another episode of the Two Foot Tackle Podcast. Make sure you subscribe and do all that good stuff. It does mean more than the world. Um, yeah, stay well, stay safe. See you guys next week. Good bye.